So October 13th, I'd been in Afghanistan for about two weeks. Um, we had done a number of partner patrols with the outgoing team. Uh, this was the first patrol that we were doing once they'd flown out. So it was our first um, standalone patrol. Um, and our job was to... Our base's job was to... Um, train the Afghan National Army so that essentially they could take over security of their own country once we left. Um, so we went out on patrols with my four-man sniper team. Uh, we were working with about 30-ish other Australians and about 30 to 40 Afghani counterparts. And we'd had intelligence that there was like 20 Taliban in the area who'd just come in from Pakistan. Uh, well, the first probably hour of the patrol we came face to face with them out the front of a mosque um but and, they, and they if i just jump in on that quick um the taliban coming from pakistan into afghanistan are they coming in to to try to take over as you leave is that their intention yeah so the team that was there before us had done a really good job and they'd like killed and captured a number of key leaders in the area so they'd lost a lot of ground they'd lost a lot of freedom of movement mm -hmm. so you know, they knew that we were, they would have a new team flying in soon and the old team that done so much damage was leaving, right? So they knew that was occurring and then they, they ensured they had people on the ground to take advantage of that. So, um, yeah, we ended up coming face to face with these guys coming out of a mosque first thing that morning on patrol and, you know, they know the rules, man. They know they know our rules of engagement and as long as they didn't have anything on them, like we were just like seriously looking in their face going, oh, these motherfuckers. Like we yeah. know why they're here. They're here to fucking kill and us. And you can't just arrest them at that point no. even knowing, even if they have nothing on them. Exactly, exactly. So we were going through the process of, you know, um, uh, scanning their eyes, fingerprint scans, et cetera, et cetera, like gathering their data. Um, but, you know, dude, like they don't carry driver's license like we do they don't have their wallet on them yeah. <laughs> you know so they've got their ak-47 stash around the corner so we're like all right we know why these get, these guys are here like we, we know they're here we've got the intelligence and now we've just seen them so it's confirmed um so anyway went on a patrol uh the engineers were searching a specific area um they had the security section were um setting up a cordon around that area uh and also like you know mentoring the afghani counterparts my sniper team were conducting a satellite patrol where we were kind of moving in and out of buildings through um, through the fields and trying to interdict anyone that was laying IEDs, ambushes and things like that. So anyway, we uh, ended up like trying to interdict a couple of people and ended up missing them because we were a couple of hundred metres away. By the time we got there, you know, moving, you know, quite stealthily through the area, they disappeared. Mm -hmm. um, and then we got word over the radio that uh, the, the search had basically been finished and it was our role to then move into a location, find an exit point to get out of the green zone back into the desert because there's these um, aqueducts. What, what is the green zone for anyone that doesn't understand that? Yeah, good question. So the green zone, it's not a safe area. The green zone is literally where the trees are because in the valleys, you've got these big mountains on either side and then in the valley, it's like it's where the river runs. And then obviously where the river runs, that's where the greenage is, mm -hmm. right? So then they have these aqueducts where they basically like dig these channels to channel the water from the river into their fields. You know, there's a heap of marijuana growing yeah. and... Um, poppies and things like that. So um, some of these aqueducts were massive, man, like two metres wide, two metres deep. And, you know, there was only certain footbridges where you could cross over. So that's obviously where, you know, Taliban would lay IEDs and target yeah. us as we are going through. And they're trying to essentially channel us into these areas. So anyway, word came over the radio. Yep, snipers go and do your thing, find a position for us to break out. So... We started moving in that direction. We got to a certain point and we just saw atmospherics deteriorate, you know, like just everyone just disappeared, man. All and the, then there's the, like the local people living there. Yeah. Yeah. All yeah. the locals just disappeared. They saw us and they're like, oh shit. And they got the fuck out of there. Mm -hmm. So we're like, oh, there's something bad's about to happen. For full episodes, visit our YouTube channel, Fruiting Body Podcast.